This is Victor with Excited Atom Design, and today I'm going to show you how to make a really quick puzzle. Um, I know puzzles are very popular right now, and I've kind of come up with a way that makes them pretty fast. So we're going to go ahead and create a new document. We are going to make this document bed size. So I'm going to go ahead and title this puzzle. Hit create. Okay. I want my puzzle to be square. All right, so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our rectangle tool and I'm going to go ahead and click on the board and I want my puzzle to be uh, five and three eighths by five and three eighths. All right, make it perfectly square. You can make it any shape you want. You just have to take that into account later on. All right, let's move this up to the center. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. So that way I can see the board a little better. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to go over to my layers palette. And I'm going to title this outline. All right, this is actually going to be what I cut, the outside of the puzzle. All right, I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer and I'm going to create a new layer. This layer, I'm going to double click and call this puzzle. So this is my work layer. This is where the puzzle is actually going to happen. I know I want my puzzle to be five by five, so 25 pieces. So what I need to do is I need to start setting up how I'm going to make that five by five. So what I want you to do is I want you to grab your line segment tool and I want you to drag a line across the top of that box. Um, it can be large or smaller. It just needs to be outside the box. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to take this line, I'm going to reproduce it all the way down the side of this five times. And the way we do that is going up under Effect, uh, under Distort and Transform, grab your Transform tool. I'm going to move this vertically, all right? So I already know that the side of my box is 5.325, so I'm going to enter 5.325. I know I want five pieces, so I'm going to enter in divided by five. And what this equation does is it automatically gives the distance over that of how many of where each of those lines is going to be. And I'm going to make five copies. All right. So there you have it. So now I have five lines that are equidistant from each other across the side of this box. All right. I'm going to leave them where they are right now. All right, let's make the puzzle pieces. You do not have to cut out each puzzle piece. I will show you how to make one and reproduce it, and it will cut the entire puzzle out. So let's go ahead and grab our rectangle tool. I want you to come over to where this horizontal line intersects with the corner of this box. And I want you to drag a rectangle from that corner down to the bottom line. You'll see it when it lines up. All right, and just go ahead and let go. doesn't matter how far out you go on this side. Just make sure that it's you have some distance. All right, now what I want to do is I want to click on this rectangle that I've created, and I want to add some anchor points here. I want one in between right on these lines. All right, so go over to your pen tool and hit Add Anchor Point. And I want you to come over on that path, make sure that this box is selected. And I want you to click right where this line crosses this path. And I want you to add an anchor point for each one of those lines. Okay, great. All right, we can go ahead and click out of that. Now we can get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. So if I click on my direct select tool and click on the box, you can see now that we have an anchor point separating this into five sections. I want to kind of create shape with each one of these sections. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my anchor point tool or shift C. And I'm going to click in the middle between these two points and I'm going to drag to my right. Okay, just about that far. Now, on the next one down, I'm going to drag to my left. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Puzzles shouldn't be. Each one I'm going to drag 
the opposite. So I should have two lines go, two curves going to the left and three curves going to the right. Okay, there we go. Again, if you don't like the way it looks, you can make one wider, one smaller. It doesn't really matter. Um, each piece is going to be different anyway. Okay, so the way that puzzles work, obviously, is that you have a key and you have um, a space where that key goes. So let's create some keys. I want you to grab your ellipse tool and I want you to come over and either hold down shift and draw a circle or hold down option shift and draw from the middle. All right, so let's just draw a circle. Uh, right about that big. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and drag this up so that a very small portion of the circle is on the left side of that line. Now I want to re recreate this circle, so I'm going to hold down Option or Alt Shift and drag a copy down to that next curve. All right, and do it one more time. Again, you can you can use uh, control C V if you want and just move it into place. I sometimes find it easier just to uh, make copies rather than move things around. All right, I'm going to make another copy and this time I'm going to move this down to the inside and making sure that the smaller part of the circle is to the, to the right of this curve. All right, let's drag down and make another copy. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to create the keys and then create the spaces where the keys go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this rectangle. I'm going to grab all of the circles that are to the right. I'm going to come down to my Pathfinder and I'm going to unite them. What that does is that automatically creates the key section, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and send this to back. So go ahead and right click on it and arrange send to back. Now I'm going to hold down shift and select the circles that are on the left. For these, I'm going to go in and I am going to minus to front. All right, so that's the second one in on your Pathfinder menu. And what that does is it cuts this circle out of this rectangle. So one, you want to add the shape to the rectangle. The other, you want to cut out of the rectangle. All right. All right. Now, we only need this line. I don't want the rest of this square. So I'm going to go ahead in, and I am going to delete these anchor points. So I deleted the top one. Now I'm going to delete the bottom one. Make sure you have it clicked, and just hit delete. OK. So now I have a line. I now have a line that has my shape in it. I already know I want this to be a 5x5 five five puzzle, so I'm going to reproduce this five times. So under Effect, under Transform, I'm going to move this horizontally. Again, we already know that our distance is 5.325 divided by 5, and I want five copies. All right, there we go. So now what I want to do is everything right now, all of these other copies are just copies. They're not actual, they're not anything until I release them. So I'm going to go ahead and release them. So I'm going to expand appearance. Now what I need to do is I want the horizontal parts of this puzzle through here. All I need to do is I've already this is all still grouped so I can actually make a copy of this and then I can rotate it 90 degrees and what I want to do is I want to make sure that I line up this anchor with this corner anchor okay and as you can see you now have your puzzle set up but I don't need these outside lines so I'm going to select both Remember, it's all still grouped, and I'm going to ungroup it. So right-click on the whole piece, hit ungroup, and now I just want to delete these outside lines. I 
and there's your puzzle. But let's make it a little more challenging. So grab your direct selection tool and I want you to drag your line just around that key. Then use your arrow key to move it over. I do this, I don't do them all, but I do a few uh, just to make the puzzle a little more challenging. Otherwise, each piece looks the same on the edges as it does in the middle. Um, again, it's up to you how you set this up, uh, how much movement you give it. Um, whoops, didn't want to do that. Make sure you're not clicking on those lines and you're only selecting the points that you want to move. All right. Again, you don't have to do them all, but I would do a few um, just to make it different. Okay, so now we have our puzzle set up. What we want to do now is set this up for cutting. For my outline, I want to go ahead and unlock that because I want to work on it. And I want to round these edges. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this arc tool and I'm going to drag in just a little bit. And that's going to give me a nice rounded corner. So once you select it, you can actually grab onto that corner and it'll drag them all. And for my puzzle, I'm going to create a, a frame around it so that it has some place to go. So we're going to click on the outline. We're going to come up under object. We're going to come under path and we're going to offset path. I'm going to set it for 0.25. All right, everything else is fine. What that does is automatically gives me another line around my piece. This will also be the backer. This, this square here will also be the backer for this puzzle. So I'm going to, this is going to be clicked. I'm going to just drag a uh, copy of this over because I want this to cut out as well. All right. I'm going to make it just a little bit larger. Just so there's a nice lip around the whole thing. And now what I want to do is set this up for cutting. These are fine. You can leave these as black. I'm going to go ahead and grab all the verticals. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll make them red. All right. Now I'm going to grab all the horizontals. I'm going to make them blue. All right. The reason why I do this is because I want, I don't want this to cut in a weird way and it will, it will cut part of it and then cut the other part. I want, I want these puzzle pieces to be released differently. So what I want to do is I want to cut all the verticals first then all the horizontals and then cut out the puzzle. So when I take this into, uh, into uh, Glowforge now, there will be three layers. You'll have this outline, this back, and then all the verticals and all the horizontals. In the Glowforge UI, you can move them around. So just make sure that this back and this backer for it are third in line. It doesn't matter whether you put the verticals first or the horizontals first, but these, they just need to cut before the back does. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and send this to cut, and I will have the puzzle out, and I will show you how it looks. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below, but this is a very quick and easy tutorial on how to make puzzles. Hope you have a great day.